Well, I had it after last week's message and gotten to almost two thirds of the way through the message or seven fifths or through the, the message. Seven fifths, that isn't right. Five sevenths of the way through the message. And all of a sudden my iPad went blank on me because it got overheated. I made a little platform here and put a little tinting on the on the plexiglass so that hopefully it'll keep my iPad my message. And I know that, that uh, Brother Paul said to me, he said, that's why you should have it on paper. I said, the only problem with paper is if the wind comes like it is today, you might find it in, in Holyoke someplace. And, and, you know, that might be good, but then you guys wouldn't hear my message. But anyway, uh, hopefully this will all work. And if not, well, that's what we have the iPhone for. We can revert over to that. But uh, this morning, I, I, I've changed the message title to the, the seven C's of Joshua. And we'll be dealing with that. Uh, starting in verse 14 and going down towards the, just before uh, his death. But uh, I want to start off with an illustration. Many years ago, instructions and guidance were given to a man. He was taught to respect unseen power. Now, you may be wondering, well, what is unseen power? Okay, I'm coming to it. Give me a second. Respect the equipment you are using. Respect the equipment you are using. Now, many years after, you know, see, because uh, when you use power to power equipment, there is unseen power. Okay. Somebody in the front row here is already laughing. We need to respect uh, to be uh, that which needs you know that unseen power needs to be respected. And as one instructor's advice, thirty plus years ago to a man was given about using a table saw. And table saws can be very useful, correct? Many of us have used them, but they can, they can make life very easy when you're building or doing a project such as what I have in front of me because I went and used a table saw to cut some of these parts up. Well, the instructor taught the man that you must make sure the blade is just a little bit higher than the thickness of the board you are cutting. You all, you may be wondering, well, why just a little bit higher than the thickness of the board? Well, if you're not careful, that saw blade can catch the board and send it back at you with a lot of force. This can cause damage uh, to something around you or yourself. I was talking with an individual uh, about... Uh, some accidents that have happened with a table saw. And one individual, a piece of wood flew back off that table saw and pierced right down to the rib. So we need to respect the unseen power. So the instructor says, uh, so you say to the instructor, I got it. The blade just a little bit higher than the thickness of the board. 30 plus years go by. You're extremely familiar with a table saw. You're working on a little project and you're going to do, you're going to cut a board on that table saw like you have done many times before. You get to the shop and the saw is about an inch and a quarter higher than, the, than your plywood that you're going to cut. You say to yourself, I'm just cutting a thin piece of plywood. I, you know, and then as soon as I get done cutting this piece of plywood, I'm going to cut a piece of one by 10 pine. So why do I want to lower the board, the blade down to raise it back up again? I'm just going to, you know, cut this one piece. So, you run the first piece through the, the saw, no problem. 
And you cut the second one. And everything is going slick. And then all of a sudden, there's a flash of pain as something hits you. And you say, what in the world? And then you notice that thin piece of plywood that you were cutting came back at you. And then you remember what your instructor told you 30 years ago. Make sure that your blade is just above that which you're cutting. You see, it was given many years ago to protect you from harm. And when you heed instruction, you can operate equipment safely. And when we, when we become overconfident and take a chance, that's when trouble can arise. Trust me, I know this firsthand, and I'm sure there are others here that can say the same thing. Joshua was doing this, the same thing to remodel. So let's take a look at the seven steps that, that we need, uh, seven steps we have to look at here this morning. The first is found in verse 14, and the first step is commanding, commanding. Verse 14, and now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and truth. And put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt and serve the Lord, fear the Lord. Fear of the Lord. Well, let's take a look at this idea of the fear of the Lord. Now, you can say, well, oh, 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 no, no, it's not that type of fear. It's a kind of a reverential respect. Take a look at Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 12 and 13. Deuteronomy chapter 6, 12, verses 12 and number 13. Now, beware lest you forget the Lord which bringeth thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God and serve him and, and, uh, and then shalt swear by his name. So we have here in, in Deuteronomy, Moses is writing, writing here, he's telling us what? He said to have that reverential fear with, for God. Why? Because what has he done for you? the people that God is the one and you should fear him with a reverential fear. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse number 24 and the Lord commanded us to do all these statutes to fear the Lord our God for our good always that he may preserve us alive as it is at this day. And so the, the idea here is, is when we do what God wants us to do. He will preserve our days. How many of us want to live a nice long life? I think well, most of us do. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 8 says, Therefore thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways and to fear him. Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 12 says, And now Israel... What doth the Lord thy God require of thee but to fear the Lord thy God, walk in his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul? You see, God wants everything from us. He wants us to give him our all. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 12, uh, 20 says, Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God, him shalt thou serve, and to him shalt thou cleave and swear by his name. Deuteronomy 13, 4, Ye shall walk after the Lord your God, and fear him, and keep his commandments, obey his voice, 
and ye shall serve him and cleave unto him. That idea of cleave is, is to, is like, like it's written about a husband and a wife. When a man leaves his mother and father, he is to what? Cleave unto his wife. We are to cleave unto God. Deuteronomy chapter 17 and verse 19. And it shall, it shall be with him. He shall read therein all the day of his life that he may uh, learn to fear the Lord his God, to keep all the words of, of, of this law and these statutes to do them. So, again, there was a command. that You know, there, there, was, there was a command to the king. The king was to know and keep the law. Serve in sincerity and in truth. Joshua is saying this to the people. You are to serve in uprightness of your soul. You are to be doing it, doing this, serving God without hypocrisy and deceit. You are not to be mixing, mixing what you believe with superstition. And you are to be doing doing this after the command, doing this after the commands, but not of the adventures of, of man. He said, "Put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt." Well, you're saying, "Well, what were the what were the gods of of their fathers?" Remember, who was the father of the nation of Israel? Abraham, right? And where did Abraham come from? Well, Abram came out of what? Ur of the Chaldees. And the Chaldeans had gods. And so Abraham's family served the gods of the Chaldees. So what are some of the gods of the Chaldees? Have you ever studied them out to find out what they are? Well, the... the the gods of the of the earth of the Chaldeans of the Chaldeans were this: were the planets of the sky of the of the sky plus others. They they worshipped Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, Mercury, Venus, Apollo, okay, Apollo and Diana. So these were the gods that the Chaldeans worshipped. Well, then when the nation of Israel, the Hebrew people, went down into Jacob down into Egypt, they got a whole new or a whole different group of gods from the Egyptians. Now, the Egyptians had two main gods. They had two main deities that they had, but then they had a bunch of other gods that were associated to them. Now, the Egyptians, the, chief, the two chief are, 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 it was the god of the underworld. Did you get that? The God of the underworld? How would you like to worship the God of the underworld? You see, why did they worship the God of the underworld? Because they felt that when a person died, they would come back to life. So they were hoping that they would come back in a better form than they did when they went out. Then the second one was Isis. The wife of the god of the underworld. Then they had another god in, in Egypt called Horus. And he was the sky god associated with war and hunting. And this was a, a man with a falcon head. You know, that kind of reminds me of, of, the, of the commercial. I'm a motor, half man, half motorcycle. Remember how many of you have seen that on television lately? Well, then it goes on. Seth, the god of chaos. Listen to these descriptions of what they were. The god of chaos, violence, deserts, and storms. Now, how would you like to worship that god? Then the god of, of, of Patath. He was, the, um, he was the head of the triad gods. 
or try a God worship in Memphis. And then you had Ray. Ray was associated with the sun. It had a human body with the head of a hawk. Well, then you have the Mathor, or Hath, uh, Hathor, which is the god of motherhood and fertility. Now, I won't get into her description because it would get me in a lot of trouble with a lot of ladies here this morning. But if you want to go out and check it, it's, you can go out and check, the, the, check that god that they had in Egypt. Then they had uh, Thoth, the god of writing and wisdom, and it was depicted in a form, are you ready for this? In the form of a baboon. Now, did you ever think that a baboon could write? Do you ever think of a baboon having wisdom? I mean, I've seen baboons, but I mean, I mean, they're you know they're kind of coy when they want they want something, but have wisdom in writing? Hmm, interesting. Bast Bastet was the was the uh, the cat goddess, and it was a woman with a domestic cat head. Now, there were other inferior gods in Egypt, and they had storks and apes and cats and hawks. And, you know, as I'm reading these things, I know some of you are going to say, okay, Pastor, I get the picture, all right? Gods, there are, they have, there's a lot more gods in Egypt. So there's a lot of them. So those are the gods of, of years gone by. What about the gods of today? Is the next question. You see, Joshua is instructing the nation of Israel to put the gods away and, and, and follow Jesus or follow God. And what we are to be doing is to be putting away the things of this earth and be following Jesus Christ. Amen? Now, think about this for a moment. What are we serving today? Many people today are serving the God of money. The God of money. If you don't believe me, all you got to do is look at the salaries of the CEOs of this country. Then, there's another God. It's called self. And I've said this many times before. And when we look at three important people in people's lives, me, myself, and I. And as I, we were working years ago, I was in Bible school, and I know that uh, Brother Adam knows who I'm going to be talking about. There was an individual we worked with. He would always say this, after me, you come first. Hmm. Well, let's think of some people that, that are looked up to and, and are respected. Well, there's Mary Baker Eddy. I mean, there were, you go back to World War II, Adolf Hitler was somebody who was followed and cherished and worshipped. And then, remember, Jim Jones. Remember Jim Jones? Guyana? Where all those people worshipped him and then they all drank Kool-Aid at the end and ended their lives? Well, then there's Harry, I mean, then there's Helena Blatsky. And she is the co-founder of the New Age movement. That's a big movement. That's a, those are big followers there. But then, let's move on. Let's move on to even a, what I feel is even a bigger God in America today. It's the God of Athletica. You know who she is? Athletica? Mm. Well, it's the New York Yankees, the Boston Red Sox, the, the Boston Celtics, the Chicago Bulls, the New England Patriots, the Pittsburgh Steelers, the Denver Broncos. It's Tom Brady, Peyton Manning. It's, it's Jeff Gordon, Kevin Harvick, Tiger Woods, Phil Mickelson. These are all individuals that are idolized and worshipped, are they not? And, you know, they, they have taken a lot of time or that they've, they've taken a lot of our time to to watch them and enjoy them then we have our movie personalities and our our music personalities the gods of today are are, are probably more in number than those of joshua's day and so i have to ask us what about the gods of of our day today 
What have any of these gods done for you? What has the New England Patriots or the Pittsburgh Steelers or the Denver Broncos or any of the NFL football teams or any sports team, what has it done personally for you other than entertain you for a few hours? What have they done for you financially? What have they done for you to put you into a better position than you currently were before watching that event? Have any of those helped you out in a time of trouble? Well, let's go on and find out what Joshua says to the nation of Israel. And then we can apply what Joshua tells the nation of Israel to ourselves. And what does he say? Put them away. Put them away and serve the Lord. You know, there are are so many promises that are contained within God's word if we will serve our God. Chapter 11, verse 25, There shall no man be able to stand before you, for the Lord your God shall lay the fear of you and the dread of, of you upon all the land that ye shall dread upon, as he hath said unto you. Hey, Deuteronomy, they're coming, that's, the, that's coming up. And, and he's just, God is telling the nation of, of Israel, when you go into the promised land, there's nothing for you to fear. I am going to be with you. I am going to drive them out. Going on. Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 6 says, Be strong and of good courage, fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go before thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Folks, isn't that what God also promises us? Isn't God promising us that if we follow him, that he will go before us? If we are following what God has for us to do, He will be by our side every step of the way. Joshua chapter 4, verse 24, that all the people of the earth might know the hand of the Lord is mighty, and that uh, ye uh, ye may fear the Lord your God forever. 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 24, just listen as I give you these, these remaining verses. Only fear the Lord and serve him in truth with all your heart. For consider how great things he hath done for you. Consider what God has done. Psalm chapter 111 verse 10 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding hath all that doth his commandments. His praise endureth forever. Psalm 1, uh, chapter 115 and verse number 12, 11 says, excuse me, verse number 11, Ye that fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. You know, when we are putting ourselves in God and making God our f- most important thing, He will be our strength and shield. Why do we want to depend upon ourselves? Why do we want to depend upon our government? Who can serve us better, our God or our government? I want to tell you, our God was here before our government was here. And our God can serve us by far better than our government can. Psalm chapter 115, verse 13. He will bless them that fear the Lord, both great and small. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7 says... The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Whoa. All right. Hello, science world. When you're out there trying to deny who God is, you're being a fool.
Proverbs chapter 3, verse 7. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Did you get that? Depart from evil. Sometimes our biggest, problem, our biggest issues are we don't run fast enough away from evil. When evil comes knocking on our door, rather than run, we answer the door to find out who it is. And sometimes that gets us in trouble. Think about an addiction. If you have an addiction, and that's why we have our set free program on Thursday nights. If you have an addiction and you're, you're involved in that and you get that addiction just got a, a hook on you, you can't go and play around with that addiction. One of the times in our, one of our lessons it says, oh, I can quit. And I've quit millions of times. No, if you quit, you quit once. Second thing, the second C, choosing, choosing. Verse number 15, if it, uh, and if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether it be the gods of your fathers, uh, which uh, fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Joshua is, ten, is challenging the people to, who are you going to serve, people? Who has served you? Who has served you better? The Lord or the other gods? And then if you take a look, if, if we look through, the, when we read through the chapter, chapter 24, Joshua is rehearsing for the nation of Israel all the things that God did for them from the time they left Israel through the wilderness and even into the promised land. He said, did not God bring you through the Red Sea? Did you not walk over on dry ground and, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the, the Egyptian army was swallowed up in water? Did you not cross over on dry ground when you walked on the Jordan River? Did not the walls of Jericho come tumbling down? Did not I feed you while you were in the wilderness when you were walking for 40 years? Did not your clothes, your clothes never wore out, neither did your shoes. Did I, not, did I not provide for you all the food you needed? And even with all that, they were complaining from time to time. Oh, we got manna. Give us something more than manna. So they asked for quail. They were given the quail, and they got sick of quail. But think about it, folks. Beloved, we need, to, we need to ask ourselves the same question. Who are you and I going to serve? Are we going to serve the gods of this world? Or are we going to serve the God that sits up on high? Because I tell you, if, we're going to, if you want to sit and, and serve the gods of this world, it's only going to be empty at the end. What happens when the stock market crashes and all your, all your wealth goes disappears? Hey, there have been, I know some of you could say, yep, amen there, Pastor. I said, hey, when this COVID thing came in and, Stock market dropped like a rock. Boy, we lost, we lost a lot of money. But can I ask you one thing? Are you not going to be going to heaven? And can you take anything that you bring from here to heaven with you? Listen, when you get to heaven, you're gonna, everything's going to be given to you by God. You're going to be worshiping God. You're going to be having a, a great place to be. But who are you going to serve here is the question. Because in the Old Testament, if you look what, what was told to the nation of Israel, told to them, you need to serve the God and keep his, his statutes. What has God done for us? I think many of you, if you take a... a, 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 a um, a survey through your mind of what God has done for you, 
you will have to stand up and you'll say, man, God has done a lot for me. God has done more for me than the government has done for me. God has, you know, you even look at what has anything, anything this world has, what has it done for us that God is not even by far better? Well, choosing whom you will serve. Many years ago, when, when I never, I heard this back when I went to Ghana by Pastor John Tilson. Now, some of you may know Pastor John Tilson. Some of you may not know who he is, but that's Steve Vellante's father-in-law. That's Michelle's dad. But when we were over in Ghana, he, he told us there are two books on the shelf. Choose God or choose self. Now, if you choose, make a decision to choose God, you may get some ridicule from those around you saying, oh, you're going to trust God. But you know what? Can I tell you something? The benefits at the end are going to be great. Oh, well, you can go and choose, choose yourself or please choose yourself book down. Hey, maybe you may be tempted by somebody to go out and say, hey, let's go out and let's go out for drinking tonight. Let's go out and do this. Let's go out. And you know what? That will lead you down to a road of destruction. You have to make a choice. Which book are you going to choose? Are you going to choose the choose God book or the choose self book? And if I can say, remember the Lord, what he gave to you. Number three, confessing. Verse 17 says, For the Lord our God, He it is that brought us, up, uh, out, brought us up and our fathers out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage, which did those great signs in our sight and preserved us in all the way wherein we went and among all the people through whom we passed. Verse 18, And the Lord drave, uh, drive, or drave out uh, from before us all the people, even the Amorites which dwell in the land. Therefore, we will serve the Lord, for he is our God. Again, Joshua is trying to, re to remind the people here of what God had done for them. Folks, we need to confess and, and, and confess to others and, and show others that this is what God has done for us. What a, what a marvelous thing he has done. There are some of you that have gone through some great sicknesses and God has preserved you. There have been others of you that have gone through time, time through, uh, gone through some trials and some temptations and God has taken you through those rough times and you haven't been let down by God. Number four, cleansing. Verse 23 says, Now therefore put away, he said, the strange gods which are among you, and incline your heart unto the Lord of Israel. And so, what do we have here? Joshua is telling the, the, the Hebrew people that are gathered, the whole nation that's gathered. You've got to remember, everybody is there, folks. The gathered to listen to what Joshua has to say. All the tribes. He tells them, put away the strange gods. They're never going to serve you like the, our God, like my God is. Don't fall for what those gods, what the people say about those gods. You need to put away those, <clears throat> those things that occupy your time with uselessness. Folks, I have to look at myself in the mirror. I hope you look at yourself in the mirror. How many times have we wasted hours on something that was useless? Since COVID-19 has rocked the United States, one of America's gods, Athletica, has been shut down. 
It's been almost three months since, with no sports, no sports, except for two weeks ago when NASCAR opened back up again. But we have had no sports. Think back of, of what, we, what, we, what we have we been doing. We've been watching reruns of sports on television. Really? I'm going to get to that. I think I got, got another little thing in here a little bit later on. That practice is in the next point. So, for the last three, three, almost three months, we've had no sports going on. Have you missed it? Well, you're probably you're going to say yes. But what have you done that take up that time, those hours of watching a football game or watching a ba baseball game or watching a basketball game? Have you spent it maybe reading a book? Have you spent it within your family? Hmm. Number five, covenant. The fifth C, covenant. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day and set them a statute and ordinance in Shechem. So he made a, he made a covenant. He said, listen, if you will do this, this is what will happen to you for you. Well, you know, we need to make a covenant with God. Now, I know some people don't like that word covenant because it's, it's restrictive. Well, can I be honest with you? It should be. It should be restrictive. You are promising to do something. We, have, we, have, we are coming up now on three months in those sports, and I know it seems it's been hard, and we all have had to watch reruns. But can I ask you something? Has any of the Super Bowl championships changed since you've watched them? No. I remember watching the, the World Cup in Ghana, the United States versus, versus, uh, uh, versus Ghana. And the United States lost 2-1 to one to the Ghana Black Stars. And you know, for weeks after that game, they were playing the rerun of that game. And so one day as I was walking into a shop and they were watching the game and they were all gathered around this, during the television, I said to them, because they knew I, and they said, oh, Brony, they know that I'm the white guy and I'm from America. And I watched it, I leaned over and I said, I wonder if America's going to win this time. And they all started laughing because the game's already been played. And they didn't win. But can we spend more time studying God's word? Can we spend, you know, spend more time talking to others about Jesus Christ? Can we, can we do those things, spend more time looking at what we can do for others in our church family or around the church? All too often, we become preoccupied with things. The sixth C was confidence. Verse 21, And the people said unto Joshua, Nay, we will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. That's what they're telling Joshua. They're making a promise. Yes, we are going to serve the Lord. And if we read our Bibles, did that hold true? They didn't always serve the Lord, did they? Matter of fact, after Joshua... Joshua chapter, you know, 24, if you, you study out the nation of the history of the nation of Israel, boy, they, they walked away. So then we have to ask ourselves, are we going to serve our God? Are, where are we going to be? Where are we going to be after this COVID-19? What, uh, what, how is it going to be? What are our future goals for the, you know, what are our future goals? What are we going to be, what are we, we going to set for the future? Folks, you know, Pastor Valente and I have been talking and saying, what, are, what is next year's youth club going to look like? 
What are they going to say we can or cannot do? Where do we stop? Where do we draw the line? This is the question. It's difficult. I don't have all the answers. And if you do, well, come and see me because uh, I'd be interested in hearing some of your answers. Are we going to serve the Lord with more intensity after this COVID-19? Are we going to start realizing what we're responsible to do? Don't you know that there are a lot of people right now hurting and they, they would love to have some answers for the future? Look what's going on, you know, not only with COVID-19, but look what happened with George Floyd. Listen, that was a tragedy. That should have never happened. I was a police officer, as many of you know, for 13 years. And I, once you got a person in handcuffs, they are now submissive. You could, there's plenty of things you could do. They didn't, I know that he, most likely he did not become very combative. And you have to ask yourself, why are we now having all this unrest in our country? It almost seems like right now some people want street justice, but we can't have street justice. That's not the way our country was made. There are steps that have to be gone through, and they have to be followed. And as we see, there's some of the steps have taken time, but they are moving in this in this direct in the right, I believe, the right direction in this whole George Floyd case. But at the same time, look at what look what people have done, how they've destroyed other people's businesses. And for what reason? That is absolutely senseless. It doesn't make any any sense. <clears throat> yes, it's a tragedy, but do you have to destroy someone's other property? Somebody who's innocent. That's not what civilized people do. Number seven. Chronicling. Chronicling. Verses 27 and uh, 26. 27 of Joshua chapter 24 and the Lord wrote these words in the book of the law of God and took a great stone and set it up there under an oak that was by the sanctuary of the Lord and Joshua said to all the people behold this stone shall be a witness unto us for it hath heard all the words of the Lord which he spake unto us. Witness unto you, lest ye deny your God. He's putting things in order. I remember many years ago when we, we reached this portion of of, of Joshua chapter 24, that my brother Steve Vellante went out and got two huge rocks and put them right in front of the church and said, I want you to make a promise. And this promise will be heard by this rock, and this rock isn't going to move. This rock will stay here. And his plan was to put those rocks in the, the permanent church and there would be a memorial for everyone to remember that they made a promise to God. Folks, that's what we need to do. We need to make promises and not break our promises. Say, this is what we're going to, this, Lord, this is what we're going to do. Why did I give the, the illustration in the beginning of this message? <clears throat> When I talked about the man who was using the table saw and the unforeseen power and, and, you know, what happens is we forget 
over time. How many of us have worked with electricity or other things that if you're not careful, you get a big poke? You go, whoop, I shouldn't have done that. That's why I leave all electrical works to electricians like Greg. It says it's, it's not for me. Especially in Ghana, Africa, it's 220 over there. Over here, it's just 110. But when you're using that table saw, and if you, you know, oh, no problem, I can do it. And you run it through the first time, but then the second time, it just takes a quick second, and that saw blade moving as fast as it can, it can fire that piece of wood right back at you. Trust me. Been there, done that. I have the t-shirt. And I have the pain and scar to show you. And so we, we have to remember. And Joshua is telling the nation of Israel, I'm getting ready to go. He knew he was his time was coming to an end. And he didn't want the nation of Israel to make mistakes in the future. He was trying to remind them to remind their children and their grandchildren, and their great grandchildren, who they should serve and what their God had done for them. And you know, folks, we need to do the same thing. We need to know. We need to remember what our God has done for us. And we need to remember how many times he has brought us through different things that we thought we would never get through. May we not forget. May we not forget. May we not become complacent. But may we follow the rules that God has put into us in, in, our, in his word for us to follow so that we can live a life that would bring honor to him and in return be a blessing for us. So let me summarize. Remember the seven steps, the seven C's of Joshua chapter 24. First C, commanding. Who are we going to follow? Second C, choosing. Are you going to choose God? Three, third C is confessing, remembering what God has done for us. Fourth, cleansing. Getting rid of all those other things that are occupying our life. The fifth C, covenant. Make a promise to God that we will serve Him. The sixth C, confidence. Having confidence, knowing that God will carry us through and chronicling, looking back over what he has done. I want to end with this little statement. Where and for who do you stand? Where and for who do you stand. May God add the blessing to the teaching and preaching of his word this morning. May we not get caught up with this world. Those of you who know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, listen, this is not your home. This is not our home. We're not going to be here. And why should we get so connected to this world? Yes, we do need things. We need to go on, but can we not make our home, make this place our end all be all? I'm sure that if we would think on things and every single one of us can look, we can take an inventory, we can go do some recollection and reminisce back through things and how we could do, we could have done some more things for our Savior. May we work at serving our Savior even more in the future. Let's bow a word of prayer. Father, again, we're so grateful for the day. I pray now, Lord, as we close, and Lord, we just thank you. I just thank you for your word. And Lord, there was a lot of warnings that you gave the nation of Israel with regards to staying true to you. Now, Lord, I pray that we ourselves would be true to you. 
You are so good. You are so loving. You are so kind. And I pray, Lord, now that uh, we would remember the, those great things you've done for us and may we be dwelling on those. Now, Father, just bless our afternoon. Bring us back again this evening for our evening service here in, in the parking lot. May you be honored and glorified everything that's said and done this afternoon, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Take your hymnals and turn to hymn number 404, The Solid Rock. Just another quick note uh, for the leadership, if you would just meet with me. Uh, this shouldn't take too long, maybe about 10 minutes for us to discuss one, one piece of business. And, uh, and, but uh, I just need to have, meet with you right after the service this morning. Let's go to Lord in prayer, and then we can be dismissed. Father, again, we're so grateful for who you are. Lord, as Joshua was challenging the people, and Lord, we have to think of what Joshua saw in his lifetime. Lord, as he was one of the spies that went over into the promised land and then went back and brought the good report. And yet the nation of Israel believed the 10 other spies and wandered for 40 years. Moses made it right up into, to, the, to the edge of the promised land and passes away and turns the baton over to Joshua. And Joshua leads the people in. And all the years that Joshua lived, over 110 years, he saw your mighty hand at work. And now he is reminding the people that they need to be faithful to God because God will be faithful back to them. Lord, our Bible tells us that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. May we glean the truths from Joshua. May we serve you with our whole hearts and knowing and having the blessings coming down from you. Father, I pray you would dismiss us to our homes. Bless our time as we gather around the dinner table to enjoy some nourishment. But then, Lord, I pray you would bring us all safely back this evening to hear again from your word. We pray these things in Christ's name.